In this video, we're going to cover the new TMDL view feature that came out as part of the January Power BI update. We're going to cover the basics of how to get started with it and how it can help with real life scenarios such as bulk editing your DAX measures or migrating them to other reports. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So TMDL, for those that don't know yet, is a new definition language that allows you to store your semantic models in a text-friendly format. This new format allows you to open your semantic models using external tools like VS Code or any other text editors. At the time of its release last year, its main advantage is that it can do version control with your semantic models, which you previously couldn't do because you weren't able to open those semantic models outside of Power BI Desktop. With TMDL, you can now use version control solutions like GitHub, which will allow you to apply version control to your code, similar to how you would in a typical software development lifecycle. And TMDL view is the next step to this evolution. This view will allow you to open and edit your semantic models using TMDL scripts within Power BI Desktop. So to get started, you want to make sure that you've updated your Power BI Desktop to the latest version, January 2025, or later. And at the time of recording, TMDL view is still a preview feature. So you want to make sure you enable it in the preview feature settings. So under preview features down here in the TMDL view. Once you've restarted your Power BI desktop, you will now find this TMDL view option here in the left hand panel. So the first thing that you would typically see here is a watermark uh, that will give you some information about how to use the TMDL view, but I've already worked on this so it doesn't show up anymore. And what you'll notice with this view is it's already fairly familiar. It looks quite similar to the DAX query view, which is a feature that was released uh, last year. But here, instead of working with DAX, we're working with TMDL scripts here in the TMDL view. To get started, you simply drag a table that you want to edit in the TMDL view into the editor here, and it will generate the TMDL script for you. Now, don't be intimidated by all the syntax here that you see. I also am not too familiar with TMDL scripts. You don't need to learn TMDL scripting in detail. You can simply make changes by editing what you see here and just following its general format. Just one quick disclaimer before we continue is that the TMDL view as a feature is currently in preview and I have encountered several bugs that broke my reports, which I'm sure is something that will be ironed out as it comes out for general availability. But for now, if you want to get started with sort of using it and playing around with it, just make sure you don't use it with your production reports. So back to the TMDL view here and how it's sort of formed. So what I've dragged here is my calculations measure table, which is the typical kind of measure table that I use to organize all of my measures. And it currently has only one measure, which is sales. From this TMDL script, you can already see some familiar things, such as the name of the table here, the name of the measure, the syntax within the measure itself, as well as the M query that kind of creates the calculations table. But let's say you're unfamiliar with the table you've just dragged. The TMDL view makes it a little bit easier for you to determine which sections are which using colors. So for example, you'll notice the pink colored texts are Power BI items like tables, columns, and measures. And then the blue fonts are your properties, for example. There's also IntelliSense that can help you identify what you can and can't write if you're working with TMDL script for the first time. However, at the time of me recording this, there are some elements of the IntelliSense that wasn't really working too well. So I'll probably cover it in the future once I'm a little bit more familiar with the TMDL script itself. Let's say you want to make a simple change to one of your measures here in the TMDL script. So instead of sale, let's change it to sale like this. If you hit apply, you'll notice that your change will, will already be automatically applied to your model. And that pretty much covers the basics of how you can start using the TMDL view. Now let's look at three different ways that you can speed up your modeling experience in Power BI using the TMDL view. The first one is bulk measure creation. I'm sure you've had this scenario before where you've had to create measures that are almost similar with just some minor differences and to create multiple measures like this. And Power BI Desktop is very good at 
allowing you to create single measures at a time, but there's not a lot of options when it comes to creating multiple measures. Let me show you an example. The measure that we have here is currently a simple calculation to calculate the total sales by multiplying certain columns in our model. It's not too important, but we have some visuals here to represent what they would show in different slices, like by category or by a period in time. And let's say we want to create multiple measures to get the total sum for a specific category. So let's say we wanna sum up just to get the total for beverages. How you would do it typically is you would go to a new measure create uh, sales beverages like this and then we would put wrap this with a calculate because we want to add a filter context here to say if the category name is beverages so what this will do is when we drag it in here and put it in a card it will give you the total sales for that specific category only now that task by itself was pretty simple. However, if you had to repeat this multiple times across all these different categories that we have here, it might take you a little bit longer, especially in between the wait times when you uh, click the new measure, when you hit the enter button, uh, depending on how fast your machine is, this wait time can add up over time. So let's try to redo the same thing using the TMDL view. So let's go back to the TMDL view here and let's drag in the calculations uh, once again which will create a new page for us script 2 here and what you'll see here is now we have that new measure that we've just created sales beverages here so to recreate this measure and modify it just a little bit we simply just need to copy and paste this measure and modify it slightly to change the name of the measure and the filter context in it but before we copy it, we just wanna make sure we delete the lineage tag here, which is essentially a unique ID for this Power BI property. It's an internal property that allows Power BI to determine or identify relationships between the Power BI elements within your semantic model. So I'm sure you've seen it before where when you rename your measures, the other measures referencing that measure doesn't break, it just automatically renames itself in those measures. This lineage tag sort of contributes to that. The lineage tag is something that we don't really need to worry about in our current scenario. So for now, at least for creating our measures, we can simply just delete it like this. So now we're just gonna simply copy it and create our multiple measures like this. So let's do a few, uh, seafood and uh, produce, like this. So I'm just replacing the name of the measure and the filter in that measure itself. So we've created two measures just like that. So now if we hit apply, you'll notice on the right hand side, there you go, you have your new measures created that you can use straight away. The next task that the TMDL view can help you with is bulk editing. It's another time-saving benefit if you want to do bulk actions, similar actions across multiple elements. So let's go back to this TMDL script that we've just used to create those new measures. So as you'll notice, we've copy pasted all of them and they have this property format string. And format string basically defines how your data is shown in your Power BI reports, if it needs to have a comma or decimals in between, and how should it react if you have a positive or negative value. I covered format strings in a different video, um, but it's not too important. What's important is that it's a property that you can modify and you typically would if you want to present your data um, that your users will understand. Now, when we dragged this sales beverages here, you'll notice that it uh, generated like, let's say decimals for us. And depending on, on what you've set up on your format string, it will adjust its grouping as well. And let's say we want to change it so that these measures never show decimals. It should only, only show kind of whole numbers with commas. You can adjust it by going to the measure and adjusting it from here in the sort of measure tools uh, ribbon at the top and you'll have to do this multiple times for your other measures. Now, you can do the same thing in bulk using the TMDL view. So let's look at 
doing that together. So let's look at the format string here. And if we just highlight the string that we want to replace, we hit Control F, and then we expand this here so that we can do find and replace. So you'll be familiar if you use uh, kind of text editors in the past. So any instances where it can find this specific text in our code here, we can replace it with something else. You can see it's highlighted here already. So we can replace it with a simple syntax here. So we'll just say like this without any decimals. If we hit replace all here, you'll see it replaces all of them automatically. There's only three instances here, but you'll see its benefit a lot more easier if you have kind of more measures. So now we simply hit apply here. And then there you go. So as you can see, now it doesn't show the decimals when you drag them into uh, measures. So that's that will be the default format string for these measures. The last task that I think is fairly useful is migrating your measures from one semantic model to another. Now before TMDL view, as far as I know, there's not really an easy way for you to migrate your measures from one model to another. If you have generic measures that you reuse across your reports, you can use the TMDL view to move all of those measures from your template files into your current reports, which saves you the hassle of recreating them one by one. For example, here we have a measures table that I've created here called generics. And it has a few of the measures that I typically reuse across my semantic models. They have some utility functions like uh, being able to manipulate some kind of visual elements in my report. Uh, such as hiding certain things or maybe adding uh, refresh dates on my titles, for example. And they typically don't change. Uh, and I like to use them again and again. And it's really handy um, if they are already there available for me. Now, let's say you want to move this measure table and all of its measures from this model into a new model. So what we'll do is we'll go to the TMDL view we'll drag in this generics. And we want to copy all these measures here. And all you need to do is you need to copy these measures and paste it into your new model. Now before you copy these measures in the TMDL view, you need to make sure that you delete the lineage tags because as I mentioned to you, it's an internal uh, tag that is specific to the semantic model. And if you just copy and paste this into your new model as it is, you will hit an error. So you can just delete it like this. If you have a lot of measures that you're trying to migrate and there are lots of lineage tags that you want to delete, you can use a regular expression to find and delete all of these lineage tag rows. So we need to hit control F first of all. So I've pasted the regular expression syntax that you can use to find and remove these lines. So you just need to make sure you select use regular expression here, and it will highlight all of these lineage tag rows. I'll paste it in the description box below so you can use it for yourself as well. And then let's expand here. And let's just replace it with blank. Here, we'll do replace all. And there you go. So our measures are fairly simple. So all we'll do is basically just copy it as they are like this. And then in our new semantic model here, for example, we have an empty model here with just one table. We're going to go to its TMDL view, drag the table where we want to put our measures in, and then simply paste it here. So we'll paste it like this and then hit apply. And there you go. So now you have those measures that you've copied from one semantic model to another. The only thing that probably would have made this experience a little bit easier is if you can copy the whole create or replace uh, script from the TMDL view here. So let's say I wanted to create the generics table as well, um, because at the time of my recording, if you try to copy and paste this in a new semantic model, it will produce some unknown errors. So uh, just be aware of that. And for now, if you want to move your measures in between uh, different models, just move the measures themselves and not the whole table. And that's really it for this video. 
So I'm sure there are other features in the TMDL view that I haven't covered yet. So let me know in the below and maybe I'll cover it again. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at any of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.